Well, greeting once again. It's uh, another wonderful time that we constantly look forward to, especially recent in our lives, since we have become a part of this um, Walk in the Light ministry. It has been such a joy, and we, so we look forward to being with you every week. Sometimes we anticipate it so much, we seem to want to speed up the clock. But God's great clock is kept by His hand. He holds time in His hand. But welcome once again to Walking in the Light. We are constantly encouraging you and asking you to make sure when you're listening to Walking in the Light, you gather your families or get friends it's also a ministry effort and so we from time to time also want to encourage you to ensure that you grab your quarterly if you do not have one you know we um counsel that you if you find the nearest seven day adventist book center um, remember, we're in Antigua, so we know where to find ours. Wherever your territory is, inquire if there is one, and just pick up a copy. Then, it is also nice if you study these copies using the Bible. It's a Bible study guide. If you cannot find the page copy, it's available online at ABSG dot adventist dot org just follow the folder tabs it will guide you and you can download an e-copy so we're going to go into the lesson proper in just a short while but we'll be taking a short break organize yourself when you come back we'll be ready to dive into the word of god using the study guide to hear what the holy spirit has to offer us so welcome again, and we'll be right back. Yes, we are back and we are ready to go. We have asked God's permission to be with us and we believe by faith that he has granted our petitions. And so God is with us. And we have asked him also to be with our listening and viewing audience. And so at this time, we're going into lesson number two. And this lesson runs from the 6th of April to the 12th of April. It is captioned, the central issue, love. Mm. It has some sub-captions. Central issue, love or selfishness, that's the first one. Then you have a broken-hearted savior. Then you have Christians providentially preserved. We're gonna go until the lesson is done for this week. But right now, I have two elders with me. Elder Bell, please greet the brethren. Oh, and pleasant. Good evening to you. And I join with Elder Armstrong and saying, welcome to Walk in the Light. Lesson number two. When together we shall explore the marvelous love of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Elder Ainsworth. Yeah, thank you very much, yes. Elder Armstrong. Uh, welcome to my brethren and loving friends. Again, we are going to discuss this beautiful lesson, the central issue, love. And God indeed is love. And God loves you, and I love you too. Amen, amen, amen. And so to continue, we have to seek 
God's permission again. So, Elder Bell, you will be reading right after Elder Ainsworth would have prayed for us. Okay, let us adopt a position of reverence as we go before God's awesome throne room of grace and mercy. Loving Father, we want to thank you this afternoon. We want to thank you this evening for your love and for your mercy. Indeed, you are the Shekinah glory that sits between the two cherubims. And so, Lord, we recognize that you are indeed love by definition and by practical ways. And so, Lord, we want to thank you for what you have done for us on Calvary's cross. We pray, Lord, as you continue to shower us with your love, that we will be grateful and love each other as we love you. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Our memory verse for this week comes from the book of Isaiah, and it's the 41st division of Isaiah and the 10th verse. We have captioned this from the King James Version, and it says, or the New King James Version, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I'll uphold you with the right, my righteous right hand. Amen. Amen. Now, my two colleagues here will help me in this lesson study. The Holy Spirit have endowed them with a certain measure of wisdom. Well, let me just casually ask this question based on the memory text that we just read. Any of you elders can assist me. It's just a trivial question, maybe. After reading that God said in Isaiah 41, 10, that he will uphold us with his right hand of righteousness, according to the King James Version, um, New King James will say his righteous right hand. Question, um, does that mean that God's left hand has a convert, converse effect? Yeah, the belly one ago. I, I, I don't think <laughs> the... the Isaiah actually intended to identify which hand was used. The word righteous, the, the phrase righteous right hand or his righteous hand, it was referring to the level of authority, mm -hmm. the highest level of authority. And he's saying that the, the, nothing gets higher or more authoritative than him. All right. So, so lefties have nothing to worry about. No. Well, uh, we're, not, <laughs> we're not discriminating uh, in any case here because some people normally use a left hand. That is by, by birth. Mm -hmm. They use a left hand. We call them left-handers. Yeah. Uh, majority of the people in the world are right-handers. Mm -hmm. And so the phrase right hand is really referring to the more powerful hand. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about God's right hand, we talk about power. Okay. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't take away from the lefties. Because it's symbolic. It's right? just symbolic, right? Okay. It's just a it's just a term being used. So the lefties have nothing to worry about. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now um going into this quarterly, digging deep into it, mm -hmm. the, the it, it mentions some well, Matthew twenty four, verse two. Mm -hmm. Going down there. If you go to Matthew twenty four and you were to read this. It really captures a lot of things that will happen at the end time. And we can just look at um, verse 2. And Elaine, so what is that saying? Matthew 24, verse 2 yes. says, And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. This is a, an excerpt from an entire chapter, Matthew 24. I think it has some 30-odd verses. Um, it speaks a lot of what happened in the immediate end time and also what is going to happen in the distant end time. That's right. That is the, so it has double con and dual, dual, what do you call it, Ella? Dual. Dual purpose. Or dual prophetic implication. Mm -hmm. um, the disciples, when Jesus was in the temple and they, then they left, you know, just so shortly after, I think he scourged the people in the temple mm -hmm. and went outside. And 
The disciples, when they went up on a particular mount, they had a good view of the temple. And the sun was well positioned and the light reflected from the temple wall. So it was at the apex of time when it was most beautiful in its, in its appearance mm -hmm. from that distance mm -hmm. and that vantage point. And Jesus took that opportunity to explain to them things that are going to happen to that temple. Now, if we <laughs> go through the books of the Old Testament, there were lots of things that were predicted. Mm -hmm. uh, the women were going to eat their children. Mm -hmm. They would eat donkey heads and the, the, the drop-ins from the animals. They would be slaughtered. And But Jesus gave them instructions, though. Elder Bell, please... Give us a setting of what this instruction was about and why that we can understand the lesson going forward. Very often, people build their stability, their future, or their status on achievements. What they have achieved or what appears to be a refuge or secure place. Jesus was saying to his disciples, there isn't going to come a time in this dispensation, in your dispensation, and neither in the future dispensation, before I come. So all that you see, all that you may have achieved, very soon will come to naught. And he used the temple, a very good example of what you said. The temple in all its splendor, there was nothing better to portray success prosperity mm. than the view of the temple at that time. And the work of their hand. That's right. And so Jesus says, even this temple, which your enemies would love to have as their own. So the Romans had no intention of destroying the temple if they wanted it to be part of the inheritance when they took over, the, when they rule over Jerusalem. So they were allowed to retain the temple as it were, as an icon of splendor and an art artifice of, of achievement. But God says, Jesus says, not one stone in that nothing that you, that you see that you have achieved will be able to stand in the time of trouble. Hence, we have the memory verse. Mm -hmm. The memory verse says, even despite all of that, let not your heart be troubled. Fear not, for in that time when everything seemed to be a despair, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Elder Ainsworth, did Jesus said here, not one stone will be left standing on top of another. We know Jesus to be very truthful. And the Bible has his quotation <coughs> written there. And we trust Jesus. That particular verse too, not one stone, did it literally happen? Yeah, it literally happened um, when the Roman Emperor um, Titus um, they invaded the church itself. Who the church itself was a refuge for the Jews. It was really like a sanctuary, as another name for the temple, a sanctuary mm -hmm. where you can find refuge. And so they were depending upon this majestic-looking building that it will always be a, a sanctuary for them. But we knew that we knew that eventually it was broken down, it was burned down, and not one stone was left upon the other, mainly because they turned their back against God. They rejected Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. When the glory of God departed from the temple, the temple became of no use. And, and that's the reason why you find Jesus Christ mentioned that, as majestic and as beautiful as it looked. It served no purpose without the presence and power of God. And once you're going to remove that from the temple, once God removes his presence from the temple because you don't want his presence there, then anything else can happen. The, the stones will come crumbling down. The, 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 the sanctuary that they held so close to them would be of no effect and of no use. And so the house was left unto them desolate. desolate. Absolutely. And what I'm um, to be more in, in, in deeper down into Matthew, all the way down to verse 51, we have lots of information. 
um, about this, but one of the spectacular things about this verse too, is that how it happened, we understand from historic um, information, is that the soldiers were not paid, they wanted to be paid, and the temple walls were lined with gold. Mm -hmm. And when they set that place on fire, all that gold that ran down in between the little cracks of the stones, they, them guys said, we, want, mm -hmm. we have to pay ourselves, we have to feed our families. They dug out every stone to get out those gold until they leveled the temple. So when Jesus said, not one stone will be left standing on top of another, Anything Jesus say, don't take it to the bank. It is the bank <laughs> in, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. But the disciples were told, they asked a question. Um, tell us about the, the, the things that are going to happen in terms of the end of the world. And they also wanted to know about the signs of Jesus' coming. Mm -hmm. Elder Bell, they must have been confused. If you were there, you probably would have been. Well, you now have a more sure word of prophecy. You're not there. Um, tell us, what did those things that G the response Jesus gave them, does it make sense to us today? Oh, yes. It, it, it makes sense to, for us today in that Jesus says, let no man deceive you. Mm. So he's going to say, listen, don't be fooled by those who tell you this is going to finish the, the world. In fact, just Monday, Monday had passed. Some people in America felt that the eclipse of the of the sun, the end of the world, could spell the end of the world. And in fact, somebody actually quoted that Nostradamus mm -hmm. predicted that in 2024 there are going to be some serious issues. And Nostradamus also said or predicted some years ago, and that. There's going to be a new pope, one that is of a darker skin and, mm. and all, all kinds of things. What am I bringing out here? I'm bringing out here, Jesus says, let not be not deceived. Mm -hmm. Not even if they make predictions in your favor. Don't be fooled. For there's some things that must take place. There'll be wars, rumors of wars, disasters by land, sea and air. Don't be, a, I mean, and yet the end is not yet. So Jesus in love warns his people not to be led astray by the environment or the circumstances, but be guided by the true word of prophecy. Amen. Elder Ainsworth, Elder Bell touched off on the deception. We understand that the enemy, he has a twofold strategy. Mm -hmm. One of it is deception. Like the elders said, we should guard against not being deceived. What is the other arm of strategy? The other one is persecution, mm. which comes with violence. And uh, the devil uses all that is in his power to wreak havoc on Christians to the point where you would throw them before wild animals, uh, they you would slaughter them, even women with children. Um, they, they would persecute them to the last end and to the point where these Christians would run to the mountains so that the mountains would offer some form of security. They would even try to go there behind them. But as E.G. White rightly said, when they try to, when they try to attack them in the mountain areas, they would use the earth itself, the stones, and some of them would fight back, as in the case of the Waldenses, and they would throw those stones down on the soldiers and so on to try to defend themselves. But in most cases, they were slaughtered, and um, the persecution was very bitter. But the, the, the devil, when he realized that this, the blood of these saints became like seed, and persons were becoming more emboldened and joining the ranks of the Christians when they see how resilient they were, he would then move from persecution and the devil now try compromise mm. to win over. Which is deception. Deception. So, right. And here, here, here's what we, we need to understand from the great controversy uh, and, uh, and especially on the background is that Satan is clever with his approach in that the more the 
Christian growth. More people believe in the power of God and his church. The great of his church. Satan decide, listen, if I can't beat them, the thing to do is to deplete the number, the growth, or stifle mm -hmm. the growth. So he's going to find a way to inject a compromise or force, a force approach, which is going to be a force approach or a compromise approach that reduces the standard of righteousness. Mm. Mm. And hopefully people will, will, will run from persecution, believing that in this new environment, they will be protected and at the same time, they won't have to hide. Yeah, and wow. just, just to follow up with that there too, what Elder Bell is saying, because the devil miscalculated. You know, you, you always miscalculate yes. when it comes to God, yes. because God is more wise, more powerful. And so he thought by persecution, he would be able to eliminate the Christians. Mm -hmm. But the reverse was tr is true. They multiplied. Mm -hmm. But he re recognized that by deception and compromise, he can win a greater battle mm -hmm. in the minds of and people. And that's a, not a miscalculation because there's a people who know they are God mm -hmm. and they're known as the elect. They will carry forward the banner of truth. Mm -hmm. So the enemy has sought to fight against God's people mm -hmm. because God's people, a specific group, are carrying the truth mm -hmm. that will expose him. And so he persecutes. He brings in compromise. He brings in deception. But persecution seems to have been his great weapon during the time of the disciples when the temple was attacked. He persecuted God. God pers people were persecuted in 538 again. And the persecution will continue. But what value does persecution serve? You mentioned that the church, the seed of the martyrs became, or the blood of the saints became, became like the seed, seed of, of the church. Which caused more Christians to germinate. To, to, to Christians to germinate, so the church keep expanding. Mm. But when Jesus looked on and see all this persecution taking place, he must have been broken hearted. Yes, yes. What was some of Jesus's, or what would have been some of his responses to see what is happening at the hands of this enemy? Well, it's, it's, it's not so much at the hands of the enemy. How would, you, how would you take it, those of you who are listening, if you make provision for your children to have a secure room in your house, Bed, good bed, place to sleep, roof over their head, shoes on their feet. And they ignore your offer and rather roam the streets like vagrants. And you're offering it to them free. You know, your heart bleeds because they don't even realize that such great provision is made for them. But I'm going to cut you off there because you're going good enough. <laughs> I'm going to put you in, in, in the out of the, the frying pan into the fire now. Yeah. But the very same people who his heart bled over, mm -hmm. he came unto his own, according to scripture, and those people received him not. That's what I'm saying. They, 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 they were so blinded to alternative method, to a selfish or personal approach, how to secure safety that they couldn't see the safest place being available oh, for them. My. So, they, so they lost sight of God's provision and God's heart was broken in that what more could I have done to my vineyard that I have not done to gather my people like a hen gather her chicks? Elaine's mm -hmm. uh, how, how does such a thing um, impact the, 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 the Christ's mission on a broad scale? Well, you know, we know that Christ wept and he was very emotional, mm -hmm. broken hearted when he recognized that his own people that he came to save rejected him. And if I should go back to what happened in the temple at Jerusalem, when the Roman emperor, for some reason, retreated. Yes. 
And there was a reason, the reason we, we don't want to bring in reason is. Jesus. You know what yes. the reason is? It, and it, it was, was predicted it, by it Jesus. It was Jesus, it was Jesus' divine providence at play. Mm -hmm. When he said, when you see this happening, then you flee. Yes, and do to, not return. And do not return. If you're on your house, stop. Don't come down to get your clothes. Hurry and get to a place of safety in the mountain areas, in because the rural could, areas. Because the Romans are going to come back. Because he knew, using his prophetic eye, mm -hmm. because God knows everything. Amen. He's seen down the road where this retreat was really an opportunity for his people to run to safety. And that's why the memory text says, I will help you with my powerful Bless right the hand. Lord. You see? That is the help that Jesus was talking God about. God is true to his word. And it's true to his yes. word. And as he said it, it mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a powerful moment, you know. And um, when we reflect upon how God's pro providence works, it's amazing every time. However, however, what, what that exposes is that God is always true to his promise. He promises he will help. Mm -hmm. But... It doesn't mean he is going to, with well, the old term we use, spoon feed. No. Because you are left up to your choice to choose to accept the help, follow the instructions, or not. Many of them did and their lives were spared. But those who did not, because they were gloating from when the soldiers were leaving, they, 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 they attacked them. And they took them out from the back, killed many of the Roman soldiers. So they were gloating over their victory. And I could imagine they say, when they come back again, we fix them up again. Right. And so they remained in the temple. Exactly. <laughs> but what they didn't realize is that the glory of God departed from the temple. Oh, yes. So they were, they were trusting in, in wood and stone yes. and gold. And not in the instructions. And not, and not in, the, in the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the point, the question you ask about how all of this impact the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. is when we see these stories. Like we have the opportunity and the benefit to learn from them. We become more emboldened in Christianity. We, be, we become more confident. You're making that God, a contemporary application yes, now. Yeah, God, we become <laughs> more confident that God will help us. Uh -huh. And God shows his divine power more when there's a controversy mm. than when there's peacetime. Okay, okay. Elder Bell, you wanted to add to that? My, my, my thing, God does not always intervene. In the bad, in the choices we make, that and the true. consequences. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, he does not allow anybody to go through the challenges or the difficulties without offering a way of escape. And how God does that, we saw it in the Roman thing. The Roman soldiers were supposed to attack the city, and for some reason, they gave a weak spot. They just said, "Look, we're not doing it now." Well, back. the soldier that was at the head of that um, particular army, mm -hmm. he got some information and he wanted to go back to tend to it. <laughs> All right. and, uh, God uh, makes opportunities <laughs> yes. available. And so God provides for an opportunity for all of us today, even 2024, to come to our senses. And this, for this reason, this walking in the light is one of those opportunities that God has provided in the gap so that people may stop Listen, think, and choose. Amen. Let me say it again. Stop, mm -hmm. listen, think, and choose. So God does not manipulate our choices. No. And he does not always intervene to limit the results of his people's choices. That's right. God, he allows the natural consequences of rebellion to develop. That's right. All right? Because remember the word controversy here. The enemy started this rebellion. That's right. And God is allowing his choice to develop. Mm -hmm. And so what is playing out here is it, what started in heaven. And, and what it also does too, it shows that God is not a, dicta a dictator, or he, but he's a loving God who gives us opportunity after opportunity to understand his love. And mm -hmm. well said, because this is where a lot of us get in trouble as well is that I've heard some people renouncing God, saying that the Bible contradicts itself because they judge God. Because it's okay to judge God, you know. But you cannot judge God 
based on a particular situation, a particular text, or any isolated issue. You got to judge God based on the whole big picture because the things that God is doing, has been doing from the beginning, and we see that the word has pointed us to what's going to happen in the end, the culmination we're seeing. This whole large picture is also the picture of our life. We're going to be judged by the sum total of our lives as well. Yeah, you see, God is so wise, <laughs> right? That's why you see I love God so much, right? Because even in this controversy, God is, is finding an opportunity to demonstrate his love and his mercy, allowing people to escape from certain death. Because when the soldiers retreated, right, we can see that God's manifestation of love and mercy on full display. And he asked them to go to the rural areas away from the city. Even E.G. White says that, you know, we sometimes we need to move away from the city where there are a lot of vices and devices and get into the rural areas, the mountains and so on, where we can actually serve God in spirit and in truth. And the point I'm trying to make here is that God allows all this rebellion to take place so that he can demonstrate his love and mercy when he makes a way of escape. You see, the enemy is the one who organized this slaughter. Mm -hmm. Right. And he does these things with the intention to and hide and try to blame God for it. Blame God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bring God to the fore. So some people are disturbed. Why this good God allow this bad thing to happen to me? Mm -hmm. My wife that I loved for so many years, now we're in her prime, she died. All of a sudden, I went to the doctor, heard I had cancer. All these things are maladies of the work of the enemy. God has been working through these things to help us to overcome them. But many of us do not see that. Maybe, I don't know, God, he knows everything else. But um, Christians, though, on, on, on Monday, providentially preserved. Mm -hmm. Why some people die? As Christians, there was a busload of people going up a hill in a certain island territory. One person died, and it was a young boy that just recently got baptized, full of fire. Mm -hmm. All the others were not, were unbaptized, living how they like. He alone died. He was not preserved. There's another instance where many of unchristian people would have died, and but and, and yes, died, and the Christians would have been preserved, mm -hmm. but not all of them. Explain, brethren, what is going on here? But it seems to me saying, you know, um, the devil must be allowed to play his hand so that they, not only us but the entire universe can see who he really is. If God did not give him that chance, then we wouldn't know how wicked he really is. But what, why, but, why God allow his people to be run over by this enemy? Well, Jesus himself is a resurrection. The death is not the, 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 final, the final say. Uh, what next after death? That person who gave his life to Jesus Christ and died mm -hmm. is in a safe place. Amen. When Jesus Christ comes the second time, mm -hmm. he will be resurrected into a better resurrection. God enjoy the death of the wicked. Yes, he will of, be in a of, better of place right, right, when, God's yes. come, when God comes. Mm -hmm. So death is not to be feared. Mm -hmm. And that is why you find our, four, our forerunners and patriarchs and so on, when they were killed, they, were, they, they, they went to the, to the, to the gallows with a smile on their face, yes. right? They were not afraid of death because they knew who God is. He is the resurrection and the life. Elder Bell, mm -hmm. give us some more information on providential preservation. I want to read a statement. It says here, there will be times when the people of God experience hardship, mm -hmm. persecution, mm -hmm. imprisonment, and death itself for the, uh, for the cause of Christ. But even in the midst of challenges, of times with Satan most vicious attacks, God sustains, preserves, God sustains and preserves his church. So in spite of that, whatever happens, all things work together for good when it comes to God and his plan of salvation. Nothing catches God by surprise. So God is in control and God knows what will create what we call a spring of hope for the believers, and so he permits it 
with the understanding that I am still God and I can take a bad situation and make it prosper. So, Bedwin, we should understand as Christians, it's a life for life situation. He that loveth his life shall lose it, mm -hmm. but he didn't lose it for the sake of Jesus and the sake of the gospel. And so, it, there's something here bigger than us. Mm -hmm. The gospel is bigger than us, exactly. Bedwin. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we should not, if you find ourselves in a situation, we shouldn't try to preserve our life because there's something bigger than us. Mm -hmm. Because if we lose our life for the sake of the gospel, we have faith that we'll take it up again. Elder Ainsworth, <clears throat> Abraham was faced in a situation at one time mm -hmm. and he tried to scheme to get out of it. At some point in time, he learned that he should not be scheming to take himself out of situation or even try to gain anything in life. Because once he has God, he, he's more than conqueror. Mm -hmm. So God should be our reward. So mm -hmm. we, we, our lives mean nothing to us, but for the sake of the gospel. God is our reward. Elder Ainsworth, I want you to address this statement that is written in Hebrew 11, 35 to 38. Hebrew 11, 35, 38. Juxtapose that with what we've been saying. Hebrews 11. Yes, 35 to 38. 35 to 38. Let me read that. It says here, Woman received, Women received their dead, mm -hmm. raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Mm -hmm. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, mm -hmm. being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. These are God's people that have been persecuted, chased by the enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see God allowed it to happen. Allowed it to happen. The, and you have to understand that this world is not our home. We're just pilgrims passing through. Uh, you see, the problem with this world, this world is corrupted with sin and there's nothing good here. And we shouldn't really want to desire any part of this world because it's very transient and soon it will be burnt up with fervent fire. So God has to creating us a desire for a better world. And persecution acts like a purifying agent that will take selfishness, and that is why part of the title of and this And worldliness. Story, selfishness and worldliness out of you. Yes, man. Right? So these things may seem bad, but they're actually working out in God's favor. Matter of fact, God is sovereign, and he overrules in the events of this earth and his history for his own purpose and for his own good. So what seems like something bad actually works out to be for our own, own best good. So if the bank take away your house. Nothing wrong with that. If he takes away your car. <laughs> go ahead. Your child die. It doesn't matter. You're diagnosed with cancer. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, Elder Bell, I don't know what you want to say this time, but I see there's a last paragraph here. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't mind, in vain was Satan's effort to destroy the church mm -hmm. of Christ by violence. The great controversy in which the disciples of Jesus yielded up their lives did not cease when these faithful standard bearers fell at their post. It didn't cease. No. Elder Bell, do we have those standard bearers among us today? Yes, we do. Tell us. We, because we have, a, we have come to a time when we measure success or strength by visibility, vis, visible mm, sights. So we walk, walking by sight, Elder. And not by faith. Mm -hmm. And so, the, I mean, look at Hebrews chapter 11. Is a whole miracle of faith. Mm -hmm. And we're saying some of the faithful people actually suffered death and imprisonment. Now, 
to me, debt and imprisonment shows a form of weakness or overpowering strength from the opposing side. But the Bible says, in that is victory. Amen. Uh, so Amen. I want to show those who are listening, victory is not measured by the number of people who left standing. Mm. Victory is measured in Jesus Christ, who is the conqueror of even death. Yes. And so what appears to be failure is in fact victory for Jesus. Question. Yes. How should we respond in the face of life's persecution? As a Christian, Elder, think carefully here. Mm -hmm. I call myself a Christian, but I have, I'm on the job and I'm being pressured by the boss, suspended for, for something I didn't do. My car got hit. The insurance is not paying me. Then I got a situation where an earthquake passed. My house is being wrecked. The insurance company is not looking at me. Elder, I'm going through a tough time. Mm -hmm. How should I respond as a Christian in the face of persecution? In the face of persecution, it is the enemy's plan to frustrate the human heart mm. and mind. But God says, we stand still and know that I am God. That is if you are aware and yes. have this knowledge. And so what, what God does in his, in his beautiful day, and we're going to go back to mm -hmm. the Jerusalem. The children of Israel were not aware the plan to preserve the lives of the Jewish people in Matthew 24. Mm. But God providentially stopped the army from going forward. And he, told, he left the instructions to tell my people when this happens, flee for safety. I am saying God will instruct his people at the appropriate time that faith and victory is ahead. He will find a way to get it done. How he does it, that's love. Okay. I, oh, I can yeah. only tell you, God will find a way. I, I, like, I like the point you raise there, Elder Bell, because mm -hmm. it's exactly the recipe, mm -hmm. right, that God gave to his people. Mm -hmm. That when you see trouble, mm -hmm. you don't stand up and face it. You run. Mm -hmm. That is, that is, that is the, the instruction given. But does flee. that demonstrate faith? Yes, because you know why? When you flee from where you are and you're going and you spread yourself throughout the world, what do you think you're doing? You have an opportunity now to spread the word of God and your faith to other people who would not have gotten that opportunity if you were in one place in the city. So, 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 so elders, I'm understanding here now that faith is putting trust in God's instructions. Instructions. And the, not necessarily walking by sight. Exactly. Or what you would have built up with your hand. Don't put your faith in that. Your, your, your bank account. You have a massive house. How it can, can come because you have your window shutters mm. and so on. We must put our faith in what God say, though it appears to be something that don't make sense. It appears like it, as if it doesn't make any sense. But what God is trying to say to you, spread yourself out. This is your opportunity to spread yourself out. Remove from where you are and take the word wherever you go. So uh, sometimes even if it wasn't for persecution, mm. persons would move. They would stay right there in the city, enjoying city life. Mm. But because of persecution, you have to flee. When you flee, you flee with the word. And that is God's way of spreading the gospel in throughout this situation. The, throughout, throughout persecution is God's way of spreading the word as well. So what looks like foolishness makes perfect sense to God. So how did that apply to us today amidst persecution? Yes, well, today <laughs> we will we have, respond. Right. When they're going to persecute us, we believe they will persecute us because history has a way of repeating itself. When that time comes, we are, we are called to remove ourselves. Mm -hmm from the busy spotlight where they can see you and you go into the rural areas and you can go into places that you have not been before so you can have an opportunity to spread the word of God and to worship God in peace. And we ask, so we ask to, in, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, we must be faithful. Faithful to the instructions that God that gives. That God gives. So, so faith is not a man standing and saying, I have a lot of faith. No, it's in a man that stands and on, on the dust said, 
the Lord. You don't Though want, the heavens fall. You don't want to bring on early persecution on yourself. Mm -hmm. If you see the fire in one area, go where there is no fire. It okay. makes sense. It makes absolutely a lot of sense. So you must have a relationship with God to mm -hmm. understand the leading of the Holy Spirit and the noise voice. Exactly. Now, how do we fit into the community? Understand we have all this faith in the word. We understand we're armed with the knowledge of persecution, mm -hmm. what it, 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 it can do to us and so on. Um, Jesus, when he traversed this earth and he went into places where there's destitution and people are sick and so on, there's a particular word that's usually associated with that. He's always moved with compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As faithful as we may be, how can we translate that into fleshing out our faith in our communities? Where we see people are sick when El they're sick. Oh, okay. El 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 so, yes. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we do, uh, one glimpse of the Savior, one glimpse of the Savior can change our attitude and we can therefore be engaged in house to house uh -huh. conversation. Yes, man. Please, by please, move. I can say, Elder. Elder into it and you are not far off at all. You're right on target, right on point. Persecution had to spread people out. Mm. And as they spread, they spread with the good news and the spirit of the Lord. You see, we tend to leave this to humanity alone, but the spirit is at work. Yes. Even in the deepest of persecution. That's when the persecution is allowed. That's right. So that People will go and the word will spread. As many as believe, we have in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5. Mm. All speak to the growth of the church. All because they were going from house to house, mm -hmm. spreading the good news of the resurrected Savior. So we have house to house response mm -hmm. and caring and showing care we care for our community. That's right. We also have one and one. You know, we also have crusades, you know, because mm -hmm. they, 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 in, in the book of Acts, there were two crusades where thousands came and uh, people heard the gospel in their, their own tongue, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so carrying the gospel to individuals in our community is an act of faith. But um, when we carry the gospel, should we just carry the raw gospel? Is there anything else in the community that we, that we as human beings connected to God should be caring about? Yeah, well, of course, I believe as an evangelist, when you're taking the word of God to people, you, you have to go with something tangible as well. So what's the Jesus method? Yeah, Jesus went about doing good and healing the people and supplying them with food. Mm. When they were hungry, he fed right. them with two, two fish and five loaves of bread. In, in, in our, in our um, setting um, and our economic situation, Certain so situations may, may call for money. Well, let me tell you, if you go back to the early Christians, right? They sold all okay. that they had. I mean, we're okay. far from it right now. I don't know if we, when we're going to get there. But mm -hmm. they sold all that they had. And they were able to distribute to every man and woman and child. And they lacked nothing. And Everybody had enough and more to, 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 to spend and, 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 give, and to and give along. Nothing. And lack and nothing. What kind of mathematics is that? Well, that is how when God <laughs> divides you, multiply. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, One of the situations is, and I don't mean to hit it, mm. but I'm going to say it. The devil tried to remove God's compassion from humanity by replacing community outreach program into secular hands. One of which is Red Cross. Mm. Don't misunderstand. And That's powerful, Elder. Thank you. Sometimes we as Christians let go of God's providential provisions mm -hmm. to reach communities and to create further believers. We give it love. to the world. We give it to the world's strategy mm -hmm. and say they are good people. Mm -hmm. if, if, and, we, and so, and, and God, and this is what breaks God's heart that here I've called the people to be my disciples empowering them with power and authority to go on to the utmost part of the world, hmm. converting people, baptizing people, teaching people. And what do we do? We said, we drop our hands and say, this seems hard. And we give it to a secular environment. We give it to Mother Teresa and other areas. They're good, all right. But when we leave it to them, 
we take away the work of the Spirit, which God has already made provision. Because mm. all of that is packaged in the gospel. That's what I'm saying. But when we give it to them, we allow in the, 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 what we call a compromise well, approach I, I won't say to God's it, community. I wouldn't say we give it to them or we should join them. <laughs> And maybe even do better than them. <laughs> because we have the gospel truth. And we should have the love of God in our hearts bubbling mm -hmm. over. So we want to help people. And even when you don't have anything to give, silver and gold I may not have. But what I have, I will give unto you. Hallelujah. And so yes. I, you can heal people through the prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. And you can you can even cause them to, to become healthy because of your prayer that you pray. And protection can be offered to them through your prayers. Yep. But these are might not be tangible things. But Peter did it. But remember, <clears throat> Edler, that we're looking at a great controversy. Mm -hmm. And one of the aspects of this controversy is for the Satan to mimic, replace, and compromise God's purpose let's, and plan. Let's mm -hmm. hear what the lesson says here. Mm -hmm. It says that the great, in, in the great controversy, as you just mentioned that, Elder, raging in the universe, mm -hmm. The devil wants to deface the image of God in humanity. That's right. The purpose of the gospel is to restore mm -hmm. the image of God in humanity. Mm -hmm. This restoration includes physical, mm -hmm. mental, mm -hmm. emotional, and spiritual. God wants to give us mm -hmm. abundant life. Amen. Many of our church brethren in the past have left legacies of God's love, God using them as conduits mm -hmm. to, to touch other people's lives. Mm -hmm. If any of us were to pass on, what legacy would be read out as, you know, in our eulogy? Well, I would like people to remember that I was a loving person who had compassion on the poor, and the needy, uh, someone who you can talk to and, and, willing, and willing to listen and share the gospel mm -hmm. and the hope of God and to bring comfort to people in distress. Amen. Elder Bell, what would you like to be your legacy? My, my legacy is, is that the love of God penetrates all human endeavors so that I really love my brother, I love my sister, I love my community, I love people, not because I can do good or they can do good for me, but because God so loved the world. Elder, please read John 13, 35. Because you two gentlemen are saying, <laughs> talking Bible language. John 13. 35, yes. By John 13, okay, I can read. I have it. By this, okay. all men will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one for another. Okay. And first John, in the essence of time, 421 says, And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. also. Beloved, <clears throat> there are many things that we can do on this earth and pat ourselves on the back. But the one thing that will carry on throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity is sharing love with each other. Mm -hmm. No matter what we have done, God is love. Mm -hmm. You can't pat yourself on the back for that. Mm -hmm. Any last word, Elder? Well, I am saying that God permits suffering so that we can have an opportunity to show love to people. When persons don't have, and we carry food for them, yes. we give them clothes, we give them shoes, whatever the case is, they might be suffering. But in that suffering, God is sending help. And in that help, people would know that God is good. So it's an opportunity for you to share God with others. Elder Bell, any last word? Yes, my, 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 my thought for this week is that for God so love, mm -hmm. that he spared nothing to bring humanity to the point of making wise choices in understanding his plan for salvation. Amen. And that is love. Amen. That is love. For greater love had no man than this, than a man, a God could come 
lay down, down his life. His life. You know, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance, but I heard the statement that God does not come down to meet man, but man comes up to meet God. And I, I, I had to challenge that statement. For God left the quarters of heaven mm -hmm. to come down to be less than angels to rescue man. What this statement really means is God does not lower his standard to meet man, but he brings man's standard up to meet him. him Jesus but he name. comes in person to save us, that we in turn might be redeemed back to the image of God. Yes, brethren, that's the lesson for this week. In essence, it is life for life. God has given his life to save us, and that's an act of love. Mm -hmm. God is asking us to follow him, love one another. That will demonstrate his love to others and will also cause us to demonstrate that we love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. In this controversy, choose to follow God. We'll be right back with our benediction. We have shared today a powerful lesson, which in essence is the demonstration of God in all his glory. The enemy have done a lot of things to this, um, this earth and the inhabitants of this earth. And everything that this enemy have done we have seen the results of it, the results of this controversy, the results of sin. Everything the enemy have done, it is designed for mankind to say that there is no God. God is a wicked God. But God's people who know their God understands what is going on. I want to encourage you, study the word, trust God. And if you need at all any counsel to open your eyes to this controversy, the Bible says in, 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 in Ezekiel that in controversy, we should use God's judgment. And if you apply God's judgment, you would have exposed the enemy and would, you would have applied justice to the situation. At radio, at slcadventist.org is help. Or you can call 562-1015. Or you can contact any of Adventist elders, any Adventist church members, anywhere. Just remember, radio at slcadventist.org. We are there to help you. God bless you.